Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Little Under Rated. Today we are going to check out a video titled as Three Mid Cap and Small Cap Stocks from This Sector as a Buy Call in 2023. Let's jump to the video. Now that we are in Q3 result season, there is one sector that has emerged as a best performer so far. It's banking sector. Some of the banking companies have posted stellar quarterly numbers. Honestly speaking, I am not surprised with the results. We have been discussing this for a long time that banking sector is looking very promising due to two major reasons. A. High credit growth cycle with rapidly growing loan book and B. Improvement in asset quality with fall in bad loans. As per RBI, today the banking sector of India has one of the cleanest balance sheet in last seven years with banks gross NPA at seven years low and net NPA at decade level low. This has set a great platform for banking companies to capitalize on credit growth and eventually make huge profits. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Pursa Finance Academy. When it comes to banking stock, there are three most important parameters to watch. A. Deposit growth, B. Credit growth and C. Asset quality. The simple reason is, people deposit money in bank and bank in turn pass on this money as loan to borrowers and in between fetch their margins. So ideally, the deposit should increase so that banks have good money to lend. And of course, the loan book that is the credit book should grow so that banks can give loan and make money. However, a very important parameter in banking sector is asset quality. In the journey to grow the loan book, banks have to ensure that they give loan to people and corporates with high credibility. Because if a person or corporate house default in payment, banks not just lose interest, but they also end up losing the principal amount. And hence, asset quality plays a very crucial role while shortlisting a banking stock for investment. Now, I've been closely keeping a track of banking sector performance and have identified stocks from both large caps as well as small cap and mid cap space that has posted great result in latest December quarter. As far as large cap banking stocks are concerned, ICICI Bank has again posted stellar numbers with Q3 profit growth of 34% year on year and looking very attractive at current levels of around 870 with a P ratio of 19 and price to book value ratio of 3.35. In fact, even SDFC Bank has posted good numbers with Q3 profit growth of 18.5% year on year and Kotak Mahindra Bank has also shown good growth with Q3 profit of 31%. Axis Bank has also posted stellar numbers with profit growth of 62% year on year. And all these top lenders have beaten street estimates. But I keep getting requests to discuss mid cap and small cap stocks that can potentially generate much higher returns. So in this video, we will discuss three stocks from mid cap and small cap banking stocks that can potentially generate good return in 2023 and beyond. But before we proceed, this video is only for educational purpose. Make sure that you do your research before investing your money. Alright, let's get started. So first mid cap banking stock with excellent Q3 result is Federal Bank. Now I've already discussed Federal Bank in the past and why it is worth investing for long term. If you look at Q3 results, banks deposit stood at 2 lakh crore and grown by 15% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter. Banks CASA ratio stood at 34.2% that has grown 7% year on year. Its loan book stood at 1.7 lakh crore and has grown 19% year on year. If you look at loan book breakup, 54% loan is from retail and remaining 46% is from wholesale. Overall, bank's net interest margin has also expanded and stood at 3.49% in Q3. As a result, bank's operating income stood at 1,274 crore that has grown 39.4% year on year and its return on equity stood at 15.9%. As far as asset quality is concerned, bank's asset quality has consistently improved with net NPA falling to levels of 0.73% which is fantastic. And provision which is the money set aside for bad loan stood at 471 crore. So year on year, provisions have increased by 19.9% but quarter on quarter it has fallen by 7.5% which is a good sign. Due to improved asset quality, finally the bank's net profit stood at 804 crore that has grown 14.2% quarter on quarter and 54% year on year which is simply brilliant. Now there are a lot of KPIs like net interest margin, NPA, CASA ratio that you might not understand. So before you invest your money in banking stocks, 
make sure that you have a clear understanding of these KPIs. I've also covered them in my course on money management. And I also cover the quarterly results of top companies along with major development in my weekly video series. You can explore it on my website. And now you can also listen to my podcast on Spotify. Just search for Finance 101 with Sahil Bhatia. Friends, Federal Bank is also expanding its digital ecosystem with over 300 APIs in partnership with over 50 fintech companies, including neo banks like Jupiter, InsurTech companies, instant loan partners like Pesa Bazaar, payment partners, account opening partners, instant loan partners, and so on. So overall, the future prospects are also looking very attractive. And the best part is that it is still available at very attractive valuation with PE ratio of 10 and price to book value of 1.5. At current price of 135, bank commands a market cap of around 28,700 crore. So this is the first stock in mid-cap banking space that can reward its shareholder in both near term and long term. Even every brokerage house is bullish on Federal Bank. After the latest result, Motila Loswal has given a buy call with target of 170, SDFC security target is 175, Excess direct target is 170 and ICICI direct target is 165. Now second mid cap banking stock with excellent Q3 result is IDFC First Bank. Again, I have already discussed IDFC First Bank in the past and why it is worth investing for long term due to its strong leadership. Now as far as financials are concerned, bank is consistently posting great numbers since last 6 quarters. If you look at Q3 results, bank's deposit stood at 1.23 lakh crore and grown by 44% year on year. Bank's CASA ratio stood at 50% that has slightly reduced by 161 basis point but it is one of the best CASA ratio in the industry. Bank's loan book stood at 1.52 lakh crore and has grown 25% year on year. If you look at bank's loan book breakup, 77% loan book is retail and only 23% is wholesale. Just 5 years ago, bank had 73% loan book from wholesale and 27% from retail. So IDFC First has truly become a retail centric bank that speaks everything about the vision of Mr. Vajanathan. Overall bank's net interest margin has also expanded and stood at 6.36% in Q3 which is again fantastic. As a result, bank's operating income stood at 4438 crore that has grown 33% year on year and its ROE stood at 10.7% against the ROE of 5.44% in Q3 of FI22. So ROE has improved significantly. As far as asset quality is concerned, bank's asset quality has consistently improved with net NPA falling to levels of 1.03% in Q3 and provisions stood at 450 crore. So year on year, provisions have increased by 15% and quarter on quarter provisions have increased by 6%. Due to improved asset quality, Finally, the bank's net profit stood at 605 crore that has grown 115% year on year. Now that's a fantastic performance. Again, as far as future is concerned, the opportunity is immense as the lending sector of India is still underserved. Moreover, bank is also expanding its product offering with launch of new age credit cards that is already generating a lot of buzz and also offer wealth management services and is just the beginning because Bank has already expanded its network from 206 branches in December 18 to 107 branches by December 22. As far as share price is concerned, currently IDFC First is trading at around level of 59 with a PE ratio of 18.3 and price to book value of 1.75. That still looks very attractive. So I believe that IDFC First should certainly reward its investor in 2023 and beyond. If you look at brokerage house target, ICICI Direct and Motila Oswal has given a buy call with a target of 70 rupee. Excess Direct targets are 75 rupee. So another 20-25% upside potential from current levels. Now the third bank in my list is RBL Bank. This is the first time I am discussing this bank. Now RBL Bank has a long history where it was established in 1943 as regional bank in Maharashtra. Later it got banking license from RBI in 1970. But for decades, it operated in a restricted geography with old disconnected IT systems. However, in the last few years, RBL Bank has come a long way from being a legacy bank with disconnected branch network to a new age, pan-India and innovation-driven bank with focus on digital banking. Bank launched its IPO in 2016, but it has been a very bumpy ride for the bank. In fact, RBL Bank share price tanked nearly 90% from highs of 700 in May 19 to lows of 74 in June 22. The reason was 
due to falling asset quality and weak governance structure. Something similar to what happened with Yes Bank. And then it announced a sudden change in its leadership. In June 22, Bank declared R. Subramanya Kumar as its new chief. All this development spooked investor confidence and the share tank nearly 90% during that period. However, it saw a sharp recovery since then and share has already jumped more than 100% to current levels of around 160. Now, as far as Q3 performance is concerned, Bank has posted 11% year-on-year growth in its deposits and advances have grown by 15% year-on-year. Its net interest margin has improved to 4.74% and asset quality has also improved with net NPA falling from 1.26% in September 22 to 1.18% in December 22 quarter. As far as provisions are concerned, banks' provisions have fallen by 31% year-on-year which is a good sign. But it has also increased by 21% quarter-on-quarter. Net-net, banks' net profit stood at 209 crore that has grown by 34% year-on-year. Now what is interesting is the shareholding pattern where DIs have increased their stake in RBI from 11.64% in June 22 to 13.83% and now to 19.85% and public shareholding has reduced. That's a positive sign. And some of the top institutions that are holding RBL include ICC Prudential, Nippon AMC, Tata AMC, SDFC Group, Quan Fund House. So clearly institutional investors are showing confidence in the bank. Now I believe that as retail investor, it gets very risky to invest in a bank that is still in transition phase. However, currently the valuation of RBL bank is looking very attractive where its PB ratio is 0.8. So if everything goes well in the next coming quarters and asset quality doesn't deteriorate, then RBL Bank can outperform. Having said this, it is a very high risk, high reward game. You need to keep an eye on the asset quality of the bank. Again, please note that this is not a stock tip. I had also looked at the broker's house view on the bank after the result and has given a mixed view. While Motilal Oswal has given a buy call with target of 200 rupee, MK Global has given a buy call with target of 225, whereas SDFC Security has given a sell call with a target of 150 and currently RBL is trading at around levels of 160. So if I quickly summarize, banking sector is looking very attractive in spite of generating good return in the last few quarters. If you have a low risk appetite, you can consider top lenders like ICC Bank, SDFC Bank and even Axis Bank. However, if you are looking for some exposure in mid cap and small cap banking space, then IDFC First and Federal Bank are very well positioned in mid cap space. And these are all portfolio grade stocks. Whereas RBI Bank can also potentially do well if the asset quality remains stable in the coming quarter. But that is something we need to keep a close eye on. Now tell me in the comments, which is your preferred stock from banking space? I hope you'll find this video useful. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.